my name is Nat Slaughter. Uh, I am a designer at Mapbox. Um, this is my first Nasus, so please go easy on me. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, map icons, uh, specifically uh, an icon project I'm involved with uh, as a designer at Mapbox. Um, Maki is a point of interest icon set. Uh, these icons are created. Uh, test, test. Keep talking. Okay. Does that sound good or? Okay. Maybe just use this. Okay. Do you want this? Uh, sorry about that. Um, can everyone hear me now? It's good? OK. Um, so yeah, uh, Maki is a point of interest icon set. Uh, these icons are created specifically for map designers, uh, but can be used by anyone for any purpose, uh, made available under the open source Creative Commons license. Uh, currently, the catalog consists of 115 unique icons, each one available in two sizes. Uh, 15 by 15 pixels and 11 by 11 pixels. Uh, earlier this year, a new Maki website was released with refined and new icons, and also with two big additions, uh, a style editing tool that allows users to customize icon styles based on their map design, and design guidelines that allow people to contribute to the Maki catalog while maintaining cohesion and consistency as the catalog grows. Uh, and we hope that these new features reinforce the reason Maki exists, to help map designers make beautiful and useful maps. I'm just going to scroll through a few examples on how Maki can allow designers to customize an icon set. Uh, more on these new tools later, uh, but I want to start with some of the design strategy involved when making a Maki icon. Uh, designing an 11 by 11 pixel icon is very hard. Uh, designing a 15 by 15 pixel is surprisingly a lot easier, but still difficult. And it's really all about balance. Balance within several design spectrums, and in the end, finding compromise between these design parameters. Uh, one thing that must be considered is the icon concept itself. You have to select the right concept that balances geometric detail with global recognition. Some concepts look great at larger scales, but become abstract and unrecognizable at the Maki scales. One has to consider a good balance of positive and negative space, just enough detail versus too much, and the uniqueness of the silhouette, something that won't end up looking like a square or a circle but not too detailed, so that aligning to a pixel grid becomes impossible. Another thing that requires balance is screen resolution. As a designer, I would love to just design for high-resolution retina displays. They look great. In fact, the seemingly, they seemingly make things look better than they actually are. However, non-retina displays are still in widespread use, and design decisions need to be made with them in mind. Something that looks great on a retina display still might not read on older displays, and Maki icons need to be legible on both. One last thing about balance. You have to work while oscillating between 100% scale and larger scales, often finding that exaggerating icon elements helps legibility. Compromises are made. Surprising decisions, too, are made working at this small and foreign scale. It's within these design restrictions that the 2016 Maki update began. The previous Maki iterations uh, were created by many hands, and it took a more macro scale vantage point, like these balance issues, to create Maki design guidelines and make the icon set more cohesive. 
The icon update began with an audit of all existing icons, successful and unsuccessful designs, and coming up with an initial design guideline for icon refinement. This document evolved during the icon update process as it informed the beginnings of icon updates, the I, excuse me, the update process informed the document until it was refined into the design guidelines. The design guidelines establish best practices for designing Maki icons. The icons are more generic and geographic and have bold and recognizable silhouettes. The guidelines also provide geometric line templates for designers to start with. Along with geometric line guides, there are also geometric building blocks such as shape area, positive and negative space corner and stroke use, and how to curve radius values. The style editor allows map designers to customize the icon set based on their own map design style. Icon color, stroke color and width, and background color are customizable. The icons can also be organized by groups, and each group can be styled separately. Uh, and to end, please visit the Maki website and try out the editor, read the design guidelines, and if you're interested, please contribute to the catalog via GitHub. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Oh, sorry. Hi, yes. Let's see, does this work? Yeah. Okay. Um, you say that the, uh, the icons are available in uh, pixel by pixel and pixel by pixel. Uh, are they also available in vector format for those of us still oh, back yes. working in the, in the uh... Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, if you go to the Maki website, uh, you can download um, all the icons in SVG format. Yes. Uh, yes, question in the back? Or? <laughs> Just. As a designer, do you have an opinion? When you have an icon that has a negative space, a hole in the middle, should the map content show through or should you artificially create a, a white or a screen color in the middle of the icon? Sure, um, I think it depends on the map. Um, I guess I would tend to put a white background um, behind all icons just because you know, th they are kind of a separate thing. Um, so yes, uh, I tend to put a, a background on it. Um. Yes, I have a question about uh, kind of ADA compliancy. I know, say, with the National Park Service icons, they're ADA compliant. Did you look at that uh, sort of compliancy when you were designing these? Uh, I'm not aware of that compliancy. Um, what, what is it called? Oh, um, we did not. Uh, however, we do have a wheelchair icon, and we specifically <laughs> we specifically tried to make it look um, uh, like we wanted it to have more energy. Um, the, t the kind of standard wheelchair icon is is uh, like the person is very kind of just stagnant looking. Um, so you'll notice that our wheelchair uh, icon the person is kind of moving forward and there's just more motion in that. Um, but yes, that, that, that's all we, that we considered. Uh, question? Yeah, hi. Um, so if it's 11 by 11, I can imagine that you don't have much room for curves and strokes. Um, how strict are you uh, with pixel perfection? Um, we we try to like have as much pixel um, perfection as possible. Uh, when designing uh, at that scale, it's really hard, and you have to make compromises. Um, we do have in the design guidelines um, kind of corner uh, radiuses and curve radiuses um, that can allow you to maintain pixel alignment and also kind of have nice curves. Um, so yeah, we, I mean, we, we strive for consistency and also pixel perfection, but it, it's hard at that scale. So 
um, in one icon, where would be a place um, you could kind of compromise that? Like which side or like, do you have like a specific um, guideline to where you can waive the pixel perfection? Uh, that is not part of the guidelines. Um, designing these icons, uh, you kind of like sometimes have to break the rules or like bend them. <laughs> so even though we have guidelines, uh, some bending of the rules is sometimes that's necessary. Uh, question? The continuing off of the ADA question, you did mention that most of the icons are made for global recognition. So I'm wondering what your audience is when thinking about that globalness. Um, it's probably not big enough, uh, and it's really hard. Um, I think uh, the designers at Mapbox uh, tend to just have kind of internal um, conversations about it, uh, and we challenge each other just to strive for like global recognition of, of icons. Um, but it is really hard, uh, and it's something that we struggle with every day. Any other questions? Thanks, Nat. All right. Thanks, everyone, so much. <laughs>